Let's summarize the chapter of purchase returns and sales returns. So what we learned in this chapter was uh, when goods come back from the customer to the business, that's called a sales return. And the document we issue is called a credit note. And we value those at the last stop purchased called LIFO until they've all been returned and then we move back to the, the next most recent amount. When we return them to the supplier, that's called a purchase return. Again, we use a credit note, that's the document, except for this time it's the supplier giving it to us. And the value we use is the value that's shown on the supplier's credit note. So the entries required for a purchase return, we had four. We had a debit to creditors and creditor subsidiary account. And that was offset by two entries to stock and GST clearing. The sales return had six entries. So the first four were to do with the sale amount. So we had a debit to sales return, debit to GST clearing. That was offset by a credit to debtors control and a credit to the subsidiary account. But then with the sale, we had to undo the cost of sale. So we ended up with six entries in total. We did a debit to stock and a credit to cost of sales. This uh, slide here is going to summarize basically everything we know about valuing stock. So whenever we sell stock, we have what's called a cost of sale. How do we value it? We use what's called first in, first out or FIFO. When we recorded a stock loss, so going back to unit three, we again valued that at first in, first out. With a stock gain, how do we value it? Well, we didn't apply FIFO for those. What we did was we actually used the lowest cost of stock on hand. And we did that in order to fulfill the conservatism principle. When we donated stock for advertising purposes, we valued that at FIFO. When we took out drawings for ourselves, again, we actually valued that at FIFO. And then we had the two that we learned this chapter. We did a purchase return, where we're going to value that at the amount shown on the supplier's credit note. And for a sales return, we're going to value that at the last in, first out in reverse order. So that summarizes everything we know about stock values so far this year in accounting. And probably the easiest way to remember it is it's always FIFO, except for the stock gain and the returns. If you can remember that, that's going to be half the battle. They're all FIFO except for stock gains and the two returns. Now let's try and summarize what we know about the stock control ledger. It goes up on the debit side and down on the credit. So what entries make it go up and what entries make it go down? So first of all, we've got when we buy it, that increases it. We could have a stock gain. We could contribute stock ourselves. We could make have a sales return, which is what we learned in this chapter. And now what we're going to need to do is think, well, there are all the things that make it go up. What makes it go down? So we could sell it to customers. And you can see that's basically the opposite of purchasing it is we sell it. So the next one that made it go up was stock gain. So the opposite of that was a stock loss. The opposite of the owner contributing stock was the owner making drawings. We also had the owner donating it for advertising purposes. Um, and whilst we had sales return making stock control go up, we also had purchase returns making it go down. So if you can remember that, four things that will make stock go up on the debit side, five things that will make it go down. It's going to help you answer some of the more complicated questions when you're looking for things and you're looking for shortcuts and tools to help you remember that they're the only things that can make it go up or down.